When I look at this photograph, my eye is drawn to two things. First is this very bright star, which is the brightest point in this night sky. But I also notice the Big Dipper right here, which is also called the Plow in some other places of the world. And honestly, it has a lot of names. But this star pattern is very helpful because it can help direct you to other parts of the sky. And you can use the Big Dipper to arc to the star known as Arcturus. And in this video, we will explore this bright star called Arcturus in the constellation Bootes, and we will look at the characteristics of the star, how to find it, and explore some of the reasons why this star is important to both past and present stargazers. Welcome to Learn the Sky. My name is Janine, and I'll be your guide as we explore the night sky together, one constellation at a time. Now let's review over general information about Arcturus. It's the fourth brightest star in the night sky, and it can be seen from everywhere in the northern hemisphere and up to 50 degrees south latitude for the southern hemisphere. The reason it's so bright in the sky is because it's fairly close to us and it's much larger. It's estimated to be 36.7 light years away, and it's a red giant star that's classified as a K. 1.53 star and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means later on in the video. The name Arcturus is a Latinized Greek name that means Arcturus, meaning the guard or guardian of the bear. And it's fairly easy to spot in the sky because it's bright and it's orange in color. And if we were to point out the constellation pattern, uh, let's back up here. This is Arcturus right there, the bright star. And then here is part of the constellation. And this constellation is known as Bootes. And I have a whole video on this constellation, and it's seated right next to Corona Borealis, which I have another video for. So if you want to learn more about these two constellations, go ahead and see that video. And it's represented as a herdsman. So here is kind of what its representation is is and how it's placed up in the sky. So now we'll dive into some of the star characteristics of this system. It's classified as a K2 star and it's estimated to be 36.7 light years away, so fairly close to us. And here's a picture of Arcturus. And it's about the same mass as the sun, but it's much bigger. And that's because it's in a different stage in its life. It's kind of like what our sun will become in the future towards the end of its life. So its mass is 1.08 times the mass of the sun. So, so very close, but its size is 25.4 solar radii. So that makes it 170 times more luminous than our own sun. And it's, so it's the same mass but bigger in size and it's a cooler star than our own at the temperature range of about 4200 kelvin and its age is estimated to be 7 billion years old our own sun is estimated to be 5 billion years old so this this star is slightly older and that makes sense because it is um, in a different stage in its life and if we were to look at the 25 brightest stars in the night sky here is where arcturus is i think have it pointed out. There it is. So um, I recently did a couple other videos on some of the bright stars such as Arcturus or um, that's what this video is but I've done one on Vega and where else? Antares and Deneb. So be sure to go check out, oh, there it is, check out those videos. And it is when you look at Arcturus, one great thing about it is its color is distinctive. It's an orangish red. Um, it's very bright and it's has since evolved off the main sequence band. And if we were to compare sizes here, this if this little pixel right here was the sun, this is what Arcturus would be. So it's it is much larger, but there are other stars out there 
that are much larger like Antares. This is showing you the, the comparison between Arcturus and Antares. I did recently do a video on that, so go see that video. And if we were to plot exactly where Arcturus is on the HR diagram, which is a color magnitude scale, this is where the sun is. And this is where Arcturus is. So you can see this is the main sequence band. And what does that even mean? It means the star is stable. It's in term in terms of its gravity and fusion. There, these these forces are balanced. And a star spends ninety percent of its life in the main sequence stage. And the color magnitude scale gives you temperature, which relates to color. It talks about luminosity. So here's one luminosity which is measured in sun so you can see our sun lines up with that axis but here's where arcturus is okay so it's it's and this is a logarithmic scale so it jumps from one to a hundred and so on and so forth and over here this is talking about absolute magnitude so cooler stars are over here and then hotter stars are over here and we measure that surface temperature with kelvin Okay, and you can see this is where Arcturus is. So it's it's cooler than our sun, but it's also bigger, which means that's why it is brighter. And if we were to look at very specific coordinates of Arcturus, I listed the right ascension right here and declination as well. And I show, I'm showing you the, the star map here. This comes from the International Astronomical Union, which standardized the constellation boundaries in order to make sure all, astronomers were all on the same page as we started to catalog more stars. And this was done in 1929. So it's in the constellation Bootes. Um, I learned saying it Botes, but um, there are official pronunciations there is like a whole website on that, which I will link in the cons in the information below. But just as a reminder, if we were to zoom in here, that's where Arcturus is. And you can see its size on the star map is larger. And that's because it's a brighter star. So the size of stars on star maps matter. It, it's it relates to its apparent magnitude, which means how bright it is to us when we are looking at the night sky. And right ascension is a type of celestial coordinate. It measures the east to west coordinates, and it's similar to longitude with earth coordinates. And we measure it in hours, minutes, and seconds. And then declination measures the north-south coordinates and it's synonymous with latitude if you were to compare it to earth coordinates and we measure declination in degrees arc minutes and arc seconds so in the last portion of this video i'll talk a little bit more about why this star is important and how to find it and i found this this artwork from 1888 and it shows you perfectly how you can arc to Arcturus. So here is the Big Dipper. You have the handle of the Big Dipper and you arc to Arcturus. That's what makes this star so easy to find. And I love how you can see Corona Borealis here as well. You can see that kite shape of the constellation. And if we were, here's another picture of Bootes. Um, I feel funny saying that word every time. <laughs> I'm just not used to that pronunciation. But um, so if you're looking at this picture, your eye is probably instantly drawn to this bright star. And that is Arcturus. You can see in this photo, you see a slightly yellow orangish color. And you can see a part of the handle of the Big Dipper right there. So you arc to Arcturus. And then the other half of that little saying is you speed to Spica. So um, eventually I will get a video on Spica made. But here you can also see Corona Borealis. So let's point these out. That's where Botez is or Bootes. And here is where Corona Borealis is. And remember, you arc to Arcturus and speed to Spica. So arc to Arcturus and speed to Spica. And Spica is in the constellation Virgo. So I do have a video on that constellation. Go see it if you're interested in learning about that. So as you look at this picture, are you able to arc to Arcturus? Find the brightest star in this picture, and then can you see that kite shape 
right there, and its arm goes up, and it's represented as a herdsman that is guarding the bear. This is um, the Big Dipper is an asterism. It's part of a larger constellation known as Ursa Major. So Ursa Major is the great bear, and the herdsman is protecting it. And here I pointed out some other constellations for you. Here is Corona Borealis, the northern crown. Here's Coma Berenices, represented by Berenices' hair. And this is Canis Venetici. And this one is represented as two dogs. It's really easy to find because it's kind of parallel with the last two stars in the handle of the Big Dipper. At least it kind of looks like it here in this photograph. I know we're trying to take a 3D sky and put it onto a 2D photo, so um, translation doesn't always happen very well. So I've got a couple more pictures here for you just to get some more practice. The brightest thing you see is Arcturus. It's the very, very bright star in the night sky. So can you can kind of reverse back to the handle right here. But I often just look, I look for the Big Dipper and then I arc to Arcturus and here it shows you speeding to Spica. And this is kind of a little bit of a grainy photo, but I like it because it shows you, if, and if you look closely, there are a lot of constellations here. So let's go over what these are. We have Ursa Major. You arc to Arcturus and speed to Spica here is one version of what Virgo looks like. This right here is Coma Berenices, kind of looks like a like very cluster of stars here. And there here's Canis Venetici. This is Leo Minor, and here is Leo the Lion. And you remember, you can use Ursa Major and the Big Dipper to the pointer stars will point you toward Polaris. We've got a few more shots here. So this one is a really beautiful shot. It's a long exposure shot. That's why we see more stars coming out. You may not necessarily have this type of sky available to you, but you can still use this picture to help you figure out the star patterns. So the brightest point here is Arcturus. Remember, it's much bigger than the sun, even though it has about the same mass. And then here you can see the constellation kind of looks like a kite. And then I see like this little smile from the sky. That's Corona Borealis. And if we were to point that out, that's where this constellation is. And fun, more final picture. This one is not as obvious as the other one, but this one might be a little bit more realistic sky of what you would be seeing. Here you can see, I believe this is some sort of light pollution that's that's going on. But right here is where Boötes is. It is Arcturus is right there. It's very big in the sky. Okay, and here he's protecting the bear. And this is Corona Borealis. This over here, um, this is a part of serpents. This is like the head of serpents. I didn't outline it here. But over here, we're getting into um, Ophiuchus and Hercules would be up in this region. You're, you're not really seeing that here. But in the next portion of this video, we'll talk about some of the cultural importance of Arcturus and why it is such an important star in the sky. In the last portion of this video, we'll look at some of the mythologies tied to Boötes. It is often the stories of the stars that we can connect to in some way, which help us remember the constellation. And just remember, there are as many mythologies about constellations as there are stars. So there really is no one correct mythology. But I do love looking at these ancient maps. Here you can see Arcturus is right down here. He's holding the two dogs, which represented by Canis Venetici. And here, according to one mythology, I found that the Boötes is represented by Arcus, the son of Zeus, and he was a demigod. Um, here is another depiction you can see that shows you Boötes. Here is Arcturus, kind of represented right near, right near his kneecap, and then you have. Coma Berenices and Canis Venetici. But um, I'm often familiar or reminded of Hokulea from the time that I lived in Hawaii. And in prehistoric Polynesia, there were navigators that knew Arcturus 
as Hokulea, as also called the Star of Joy. And Arcturus is the zenith star of the Hawaiian Islands. So Polynesian navigators use this star to launch their double-hauled canoes right here from Tahiti and the Marquesas Island, and they traveled northeast, north and east and crossed the equator and were able to learn where Hawaii was. So this is a um, very important story and a very important star to the Polynesians. And I know I'm really only scratching the surface with some of the cultural connections of Arcturus, but it's just really important to remember that the mythologies of the stars really vary according to time, place, and culture. There is no one true mythology for any of the stars or constellations. There's just a variety of them. So I hope this video was helpful for you to learn a little bit more about Arcturus. To me, it's one of the easiest constellations to find in the sky because it is bright, it has an orangish color, and then you can use the big dipper to help you arc to Arcturus and speed to Spica. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please be sure to put them in the comments below and let me know, are you able to find this star? It really, to me, is one of the easiest ones to find and it can help you find a lot of other constellations in the sky. So I wish you luck and as always, keep looking up. Mm -hmm.